<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Okay, as always, while we wait for other people to join, don't forget to add yourself to the meeting notes. And also, if you have additional topics that are not yet on the agenda, feel free to add them to the agenda right now. Yeah, let's wait two or three more minutes for people to join and then jump in. Hey everybody, this is uh, Michael from uh, from the Harbor team. Uh, Aloy, uh, I, we had a quick exchange. I ended up not adding Harbor to the agenda since uh, we're gonna go through seek runtime first uh, for our graduation review. And if there is a need for seek app delivery to look at Harbor as well, I'll just come in a future meeting and discuss it. That's fine. So just ideally just post it in the, the agenda slide if you want to do it and just ping us quickly. I think we're also pretty full for today, so. No, that's good. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll just uh, hover around and listen to you guys. The first agenda item will be logo ideas. So I think it was, I think that was also going to be a quick one. And so maybe Amy can jump there. Yeah, I'm and here. Landscape. I can let everybody wander in. <laughs> Good. At least we will go. We are going to make it a quick one because we are not going to like have a lengthy discussion here. Maximum a vote of some sort. Uh, yeah, landscape first draft. Thanks. I think Jeremy added this one. I, I hope did not. Oh, you did not. Well, that was my idea, maybe, but I think we don't necessarily have it yet. No, I haven't had uh, time to dig into that yet. Yeah, then we can postpone it for the next meeting. Let's do this. Um, I think that there's a uh, strong interest by the uh, operator framework um, team to look at the due diligence and uh, make some forward there. To, I think some people are in Kudo team and operator framework there as well. Um, that's what I would focus on um, most of the meeting and move maybe operator definition then as the last action item for today, depending whether we will still find time to do it or not. But at least I'd like at least to give uh, for the operator framework due diligence at least 20 minutes here. 
And as we have five minutes in, let's jump in with the logo ideas. Yep, I have dropped the issue into chat. Um, and uh, sadly, like everybody gets to be able to like, just pull the uh, um, PDF up. But I wanted to hear people's ideas about what they were interested in from the designers kind of first round. There's a lot okay. in here. <laughs> Yeah, logos are always Let me just quickly share the PDF here. Oh, thank you. Okay. So I'll make it a very quick round. So there is like a couple of ideas in there. Uh, ideally, you name what you like most and what you like first. I, I hear no immediate screams from the audience, so I guess that's good. Yes, I think. I love the one. last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cute. I, <laughs> the last one is when you would put, put on a t-shirt immediately. I think, yeah. The, I think I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how an ant got me. picked to be in these. An ant doing the work of carrying Kubernetes. I think Diane was, no, Diane was bees, not ants. So one thing that I want to be able to kind of move us away from is if we've got just Kubernetes in here, we're going, people are going to think this is a Kubernetes SIG. Yeah. So I'm more inclined to be able to put in the CNCF logo in here where we have the Kubernetes logo, but that is just me trying to be able to avoid confusion. I like that because, um, apps and apps delivery is a lot more than Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And so, and the CNCF is a lot more than Kubernetes. So I, I would like to see no Kubernetes logo in here, but instead the CNCF one. Yeah, uh, I think that was also when we were working on the uh, whole uh, chart that work that we, obviously Kubernetes is at the core, but we want to move beyond Kubernetes. I'm personally, I can't see ships with containers anymore. <laughs> You're over it. Yes, I, I, I had my fair dose over the last five years of, sh of ships and containers. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. I kind of like the ones that are the presence because I like presence. And so it's like, ooh, SIG app delivery. We bringing presence. <laughs> For continuity's sake, nearly every other um, SIG that has currently ha gotten their logo has chosen an animal. Not required, but you know, eh, precedent mumble. Yeah, from, from the animals. Yeah, but our storage one is a clam. Can we really say that's an animal? I mean, it's yeah, cute. yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's fair. The, the P stuff is kind of interesting. You're bringing peace. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I, I say, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to suggest we've got all of these. Uh, yeah. Might I suggest two things? One, can we get it with the CNCF logo in it instead of the Kubernetes one? Because I don't know how it's going to change lookwise a little bit, like what that will mean. And then can we do some kind of voting, uh, Condacord or otherwise? It's, it's easy to set up so we can see what yeah. comes out of it. Because if we sit here and talk about what we like and don't like, it might be easier just to see them and then just have some kind of vote and get it out of the way. Yeah, so the way yeah. that we've run this process um, uh, with the other groups is like, we have now just done our first round of design meeting and we've gotten feedback. Um, I will then go back to our designer, let her know like the here's the things that we should change. And then we'll probably break them into groups that people can like vote more directly on and then we'll move from there. Yeah, so so my initial proposal is let's remove the ships. Okay. And no also ships. The no, no, no Kubernetes yeah. logo thing because that doesn't actually help us define what the CNCF SIG is. Um, anything else that people are like down with trains or something? Sure. Well, I'm not done with trains. It's no, just... I know. <laughs> you just don't want to see any containers anymore. You're, you're, you're over like the, uh, you're over boats. We can also have serverless, so that would make it. 
I, the ants remind me of Gluster, and maybe that's just me, but I don't yeah, know. No idea. Hmm. Yeah, good thought. Okay, I will take this back into uh, our team in here. Watch this space for more. Um, if you have any strong, strong feelings that were not expressed in this particular meeting, please go ahead and put them in the GitHub issue. Yeah, I think one thing we had really were the bees, and like bees building a beehive might still be an interesting one for app delivery because it could be like the individual microservices that have this just saying okay. adding bees no ships all right that's all, right. all the time we needed on this one carry on uh, storks are kind of interesting too <laughs> all right um so I think that's done for this action item. So we go into the next round, just putting it into the notes. Yeah, but first of all, thanks for taking the time for the logos. It's here's I'm just adding here, remove ships and containers and things. Do you like animals? Oh. There is a note about how the uh, GitHub logo issue is locked to only contributor. Aloy, you did it. What's up? <laughs> uh, I locked it because we had the proposals in there. I can unlock it. Oh yeah, unlock it so people can really come in. And yeah, like, because you know, we wanted to lock things. it for the proposals and that's why it actually was locked. Got it, okay. That makes uh, sense. But I think, yeah, after doing my GitHub advanced course, I can now also unlock issues. <laughs> Or, yeah, I'll take care of it um, after this one so you don't have to watch me unlocking an issue. Super, thank you. All right, uh, then I think we can move on. So do we have the Red Hat people on the land? I just saw Daniel already. Yep, we have Aaron and uh, Rob, I think, as well. All right, so from the... We are lucky, by the way, because today we have a special guest with Michelle. So even the TUC is watching today. Obviously, we have Lee here, and I'm not sure whether Brian already joined. He just said he's going to join. Um, I'm here. Oh, OK. It's too many. The good news is it's, it's a lot of people in this meeting already. So so the, the uh, idea was to go over the, the submission for the operator. I just have to bring it up. Just give me a minute. I have to admit that I do not have time today for a number of reasons to have um, uh, to have a look at it and go through all the comments. But I think it's a good use of our time to go through things here today. All right, let me just share it with everybody. And obviously also paste the link to the chat. Okay, it's like sorry still working out my So here's the link to the document. So yeah, as, is, as I mentioned in the last meeting, we now have this due diligence framework and Red Hat was kind enough to say, well, let's uh, openly discuss what we are working on here. And this is more or less taken what other six have done as well. And I would just propose to go over the, uh, the submission here. Um, so the, the first question obviously was whether we want to separate uh, uh, operator hub from the operator framework. Um, so I think the bigger uh, understanding from the Reddit team is that they kind of fit together tightly. Yeah, right? I actually, um, so um, I actually agree that they do fit together tightly. Um, we've, we would want to, we would want to deal with all three 
well, with the with the with the whole thing rather than um, trying to do it piecemeal. So the whole three being operator, uh, framework, operator hub, and OLM. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this does raise a couple of questions um, that were brought up by others. Uh, for example, the operator hub is tightly coupled to the operator framework and OLM, if I remember right. And so then there's other operator-based projects that are going through this SIG, such as Kudo, and that doesn't use, it's a different thing from the operator framework. So how does it fit into the context of operator hub if it's not using this? Like, how does that all mesh together in a nice cohesive way for the CNCF? Um, that's so, one. Um, oh, go ahead, please. Yeah. yeah, so SDK and OLM and Operator Hub. Um, Operator Hub and OLM are a different conversation, but the SDK is just a method to create operators. You can create operators with Cube Builder or Kudo or, yeah, they're not, they're not um, combined. So that they're, I, I don't actually have an issue with that piece. It, it's if they all come in under one project and one project governance in one thing, what does that end up meaning going forward? How does it all work? Um, because right now, yeah, OLM and Operator Hub are tightly coupled. So what does this mean for a different kind of operator, even if it's from another CNCF project, like if Kudo comes in as a sandbox project, what does uh, something like this mean and how does that go forward? Oh, and how is that put oh, forward? No, that's, yeah, that should actually be fine. And, and there's a couple of things that are, um, that, are, that are going on that will actually make this better. Um, so Operator SDK is looking to replace their Go Builder with Cube Builder just in general. Um, and they're going to keep their um, Helm and they're going to keep their Ansible, their Ansible Operator Builder. It still leaves lots of room for products like um, MetaC or Kudo to come in and build operators. We would just have to bring in those controllers as um, as dependencies whenever you want to install those. And, and, that's, and that facility is already there. This, this so actually I, might that's be... why I don't. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were. Oh, no, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm done. <clears throat> um, this might be a good time for me to comment in on, on from the Kudo side. Um, we have some comments in the operator framework draft governance. And uh, you know, we, we, we did some talking at, um, at uh, KubeCon because we're also working on introducing like a, um, uh, another interface as well for operators being able to depend on each other called Koi. Um, but what, what we added to the um, uh, PR1 in the operator framework governance uh, or draft was actually um, uh, getting, getting some more projects in, in with the uh, operator framework umbrella. So like our test tool, Kudo itself. So you almost have like that meta C approach and making sure that all these projects interoperate well together. Um, so, so, you know, the, the, if you if we go get some time, go look at that PR, you can see like where we're almost like trying to like pull out multiple projects under a large umbrella and like cover operators as a whole. I think that's a, I think that's a great approach. Yeah, so that work was kind of delayed with like the holiday transition, but we're going to pick that up here really soon. Um, working with the Kudo folks, this is Rob from the operator for me. Yeah, and also from, from my point, I think it's totally fair for one project to, to run their own infrastructure uh, for uh, their, their own delivery mechanisms, also for operator hub. Uh, still the command is, and as, as you mentioned, uh, going forward that we obviously want to have tighter collaboration between projects, obviously, but just because something is specific to one project, for me, uh, does not necessarily mean we can't uh, uh, or kind of we should push back on the project per se being in CNCF. Actually, that, that's what then part of the collaboration within CNCF should be about. The only thing I would be worried about if an operator hub operator could only be used in OpenShift because that would make it tightly coupled to uh, one vendor technology, but this is not really the case. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Um, I'm, I'm doing work and I don't work on OpenShift at all. And we're, I'm using OLM and operator hub and and I don't use the oh. operator SDK and it, it so, all works just fine. So I want to point something out, right? I'll give an example here. If I go write an operator in something like Rust and then I package it up as a Helm chart to be installed, today it cannot be listed on Operator Hub because it doesn't use OLM. So the situation with that is that um, 
for operator hub IO to work, um, we needed kind of a common definition of metadata that's relevant for the catalog display. So simple things like a logo, a short name, a display name, a description, links to pull up stuff. Uh, and none of that existed at this time when we conceived operator hub IO. Um, and it's part of the um, C uh, CSV um, spec that OLM also uses for lifecycle and runtime concerns. And uh, we already started looking into ways to separate this out from the runtime aspect of OLM. So we are actually uh, we were actually talking to QBuilder already last year around a common format to package operators and just um, get this catalog um, style data into a common spec and then separate the concerns from the runtime um, aspects of things like OLM. So that also kind of dovetails with the um, application specification that's being developed under Kubernetes and mm -hmm. even the Helm metadata that you can get in a chart YAML file. Um, there's a lot of the metadata out there. But, but my point comes down to is if we look at this as a whole, right, I'm not trying to like cast blame and get into architecture, but as the SIG app delivery, I think we're supposed to do like due diligence and look at this from a CNCF perspective. And so what happens if we have multiple say operator things that come together and, and now we wanna list them in an operator hub from different projects. If the hub is tightly coupled to one project with one way of doing things and other projects wanna come in or do land, how do they get their things listed if they don't work the same because it's tightly coupled to one group's way of doing things. Um, I, right. But I don't, I think what Daniel was trying to articulate though is the things that are required for it to be listed in the hub aren't, in, aren't dependent on the implementation of how it's done. It's so that they can properly be viewed um, on the actual website. So, But right now they are tightly coupled to it because it's tightly coupled to OLM. If you don't use OLM, you cannot be listed. It's tightly think, coupled. Yeah, but, but that's, the, that's, Matt, that's the metadata. They need the metadata so you can be listed. So when you create a cluster service version, you can create it for any operator that you've created in, with any technology. And so this is just so that it actually shows up. That, that's can, I use, can I use the metadata and not use OLM? Can I have it in another packaging format in another way, such as in a chart or something else? Oh, so OLM is not a packaging format. OLM is a mechanism for getting operators installing, figuring out what to install in the cluster. I mean, at, the, at that point, it's just, um, it's, it's just Kubernetes objects. But OLM I, actually figures I, out where it comes from and then figures out what namespace it needs to be in and, and puts it there. So that, that's what yeah, I, I understand that, but, but I'm coming back to implementation here. If somebody packages a chart in say Rust, or they write a chart in Rust, all right, sorry, an operator in Rust and they packages it as a Helm chart to be installed, can it be listed in the operator hub and work with everything else? And the answer I've been told is it has to use the implementation of OLM. So unless you also have OLM installed in your cluster, it doesn't work because you need this. Like, how does this work? Like, how would you make that use case work in order to do that for operator? But, that's the question. I, and it's perfectly valid, but I think it's also just a logistical question. But doesn't it also beg the question that could we take an operator that we've created in our sense and use it the same way we use Helm? I mean, the idea is to have different implementations of the same things and enhance the ecosystem. And I think I, no, no, I, I totally understand that. Today, there are a lot of operators packaged up as Helm charts, and there are people who prefer to do that. And if Operator Hub is the destination to find all of your operators, and now we're saying that a set of operators that people exist and use and work with today cannot be listed in there because they're not using a certain thing. It's not really a full list of all the operators out there. It's a yeah, subset but, of those. And so, that's um, the... so Red has actually gone above and beyond in this respect. And um, you can actually supply a Helm chart to operator SDK and it'll build all the metadata out for you. Okay, but you still have to use operator SDK. You still have to install OLM in your cluster and it has to work with OLM to be listed on the operator hub. And so today with the many of the charts that are out there that do this, unless they make modifications, even though they do operators, they can't be listed in operator hub. And so is it operator hub or is it OLM's hub? Right. And this gets into, if we look at it systematically across the CNCF, not just like if this were the operator framework hub or something like, okay, it's very scoped to this project. It's very scoped that way, kind of the way the Helm hub is. But if it's listing all operators everywhere, and then we're artificially limiting some of that listing. And I can understand there's lots of technical constraints in the way it came to be and why it came to be. And I'm not arguing that. 
I'm just saying as a CNCF, and it wasn't me who, who noticed this, right? The TOC um, brought this up in the first place, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody said, hey, what about this stuff? And they actually talked about all the hubs, right? Because right now there is the, uh, there's a security hub, uh, there's a Helm hub, we introduced operator hub. There's actually effort working on to see how do you consolidate into one hub. And I know a couple of the folks, Diane and, and folks were at a meeting at KubeCon on this. They're looking at how do you consolidate everything into a single hub, right? Like why do we need a cloud native security hub? Why do we need a Helm hub? If customers have to go all over the place or users have to go all over the place, right? I can see some of my operators in operator hub. I can see some of them in the Helm hub. What's the difference? How do I navigate this? What's going on? It's an entirely confusing experience. I think it was Joe Beta who actually brought that up in one of the TOC meetings. And so when we look at this, right, and we're still fracturing things with this current stuff, what, what does that mean and how does it impact end users? Not us project owners, but the people who come to consume stuff and navigate but it. I, I thought the whole point is not to be kingmakers. If we have one hub for everything, then I think we're being very decisive about how things should be done by offering an alternate way to do it. And that alternate way welcomes, however you build it, will provide an easy way that we can get it in here as well. So long, so we can show it. It needs to have a minimal amount a logo, um, the CSV to talk about the versions and what are the dependencies, things like that. I, I guess I'm, I'm, Matt, what I'm hearing you say is that you feel like there should be one hub and maybe i'm misunderstanding that uh I, okay so so two clarifications uh one um the operator hub isn't saying anybody can build an operator any way and get it listed it's saying if you build and package your operator a certain way you can get your operator listed so it is automatically limiting it's not saying anybody can come it okay. is doing king making and then the second thing is to point out the one idea of one place that was others. That was Joe on the TOC, and it was a point on the TOC. Uh, Dan, the executive director of CNCF, he's been talking a lot about this. I am pointing out what they keep bringing up because they're not here today. Right. So can we table the the central hub for a second? I think like that it's useful and it's got its like merits, but let's just table that for a second. So flipping your argument around, say operator framework is in the CNCF and Helm wasn't, and you would say that we would be on, on this call saying, you can't package and get listed on Helm Hub because you're not packaging a Helm chart. You're using this CSV thing. Isn't that the same argument? Wouldn't we want, not want that outcome as well? Okay, so the Helm Hub is different because it's Helm packages. If you create a Helm package and you follow the structure for Helm, then yeah right? It's not saying it's everything that can be installed. It's not all Kubernetes applications, right? If we said it's Kubernetes applications and oh yeah, you have to do it as a Helm chart, then we're kind of defining the way to install all Kubernetes applications, right? Instead, we're saying this is the Helm hub where you find things that can be installed with Helm instead of all Kubernetes applications. We're not saying it's all the things. And so that's where I would argue it's different because operator hub is all things operators, right? Except no, it's only operators that can be installed a certain way and it's branded as all things operators. And so that's confusing for end users because they'll come here, they'll say, it's all the things operators, not reeling that many types of operators can't be listed. So, um, I mean, I don't wanna get us, um, I don't wanna go too deep but I will actually say that um, that 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 is not that's not true. Um, it this will work with anything that we call an operator. What's an operator? It's a set of CRDs, um, zero or more, and a controller that does some kind of function in the cluster. Uh, this will actually work with any of those, and, and that's what and that's and I think that's a good thing. And um, I did have a conversation with Joe, and I don't I don't actually think he understood the project. I actually laid it out for him, and. Um, the way that this is, um, the only change that I would make to what Red Hat is saying is that um, instead of coming in product first, I would actually come in with outcome first. So um, the operator, um, the operator framework, this whole thing is um, an operator SDK. Get you started with building operators, and then there is um, then there is um, operator hub showing operators that are that are uh, available, and then there is um, OLM you need a way to manage what operators are available to what namespaces in your cluster. Operator and OLM is, is agnostic to, it's actually could technically be op agnostic to operator hub. It's definitely agnostic to operator SDK. And then you have 
Um, maybe there's another piece of actually managing what runs in a namespace, but they already have this concept of subscriptions and um, the other thing on, and operators. Um, so this is, it's, I don't think that what you're bringing up um, is actually a problem. And the only reason I don't think it's a problem is because um, they're not specifying the technology you need to use. What to, just to bounce on top of Brian just for a moment, and um, and that's that's also one of the really valuable things about you know Kudo and Koi moving into this like another spec for interoperability here, so that we can continue to you know try to get more and more inclusive as we go, and because really like operator frameworks about delivering operators right, and within there there's multiple ways of, of delivering and serving up operators to people, but it's still focused around uh, you know Brian said as far as like it being that core concept right rather than just uh some delivery package right uh, you know helm chart or something else you know bundle something else here right so um that that's that's how i see like like in why we're moving this way as well because yeah sure it may it, you know you can get the impression that 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 it's that way for now but you know, all the projects that we have under that uh, umbrella would be expected to interoperate well Right, and, and be able to be served up well on in, in the same places. So. so so let me ask this then. If I, I if I wrote one. oh go ahead, sorry. Uh, I, I think to maybe because we're just at the very beginning of that that whole document uh, and the whole discussion. So I'd agree that there might be changes that we want to do or might work on with certain projects to be more widely adoptable. That the answer we had that we basically want to have do we think that operator framework with operator hub is something that's significant enough within the cloud native app delivery community that it makes sense to be part of cncf as a project i think they do is everything perfect no might you have specific requirements on where the project should be moving in a certain direction yes and actually governance could help us here i think overall it, it is it is adding value here and if it, if we just discussed about nomenclature here, what we call the operator hub and, and other things. And I think we have flexibility there. We can move a project in a certain direction. Overall, it actually does add value. And also to, to the other point, you don't need actually all them to be installed to use uh, operators on the operator hub. We, we for example, at Dynatrace use operator hub operators and not use OLM to install it. Um, so the question is, do we consider the project and what it's doing valuable enough? And is there a value in having it on within the CNCF? I think the first one for me, yes, it is, because there's a lot of people have written operators. Is there value of consolidating it with others? Yes. If we figure out that there is a restriction that other projects have problems with to submit their operators, then this is something we should work on with the project. That's also why it would be an, an incubation project and not a graduated project, obviously. So that, that's my, my take on it. I'm not saying that everything's going to be is perfect right now, but do we really talk about something that's so significant that we can't allow it at all? Yeah, and that's, and that's actually a really good point. We're talking about, um, we're not talking about a graduated project here. We're, we're talking about the beginnings and, and hopefully with stewardship from the CNCF that we can actually turn this thing into um, something that would be a great thing for the whole community. So, um, I mean, with that, um, that's why I'm actually saying, yeah, we should move forward. Um, are we where we wanna be right now? No, there's three things in the 2020 plans for, for the, the operator project that are I think would be paramount. And I could probably think of two or three more. So let's, let's just get this project started now rather than say, you know, maybe with the bathwater type thing. So, so I asked a specific question before and it's an easy way to shut me up. I said, if somebody writes a, um, an operator in Rust, the controller's written in Rust and it's packaged up as a Helm chart, how could it be listed on the operator hub? And I've been told in many of the conversations that it can't be today. If somebody can tell me how to do this, right? Somebody can tell me how to do this. It's an easy way to shut me up because we can take many of the operators we have listed over on the Helm Hub and say, it's a legitimate operator. How would it be listed? And it's an easy way to shut me up. If somebody writes up, here's how you would do it, I can go off and, and replicate it. I think there's two ways. One, you can run the Helm SDK command against it and get the everything you need all built up and packaged. 
Um, or if you think in that Helm chart, it's really, there is a container, you package a container with Rust code in it. There's deployment and RBAC. You can provide that in the OLM spec format of CSV and list it on Operator. Okay. And so there's a way for me to package it and run it without using OLM, but have it listed? You can uh, package it. You do use, we recommend you use OLM to run it. You could also, you know, if you wanted to process a CSV file yourself and pull out that information, there's a deployment and an RBAC file listed inside of that. Yeah, but lots of the operators that I deal with don't have anything to do with services running in a cluster and many of the things for OLM, you know, they don't make sense for a lot of the uses we have of operators. And so it's, it's easiest to just install it as a Helm chart. And so, I mean, really, and, and there are a lot of people who do this, I need a way to package it up, get it listed and run it with or without OLM. And if I could see that, how to do that, that would shut me right up, right? Because now I see a way to list operators in the operator hub that isn't tightly coupled to um, this implementation here. So people who do run operators in different ways and where I work, we do. We don't, many of the operators we run, OLM is overkill for, we don't need it, right? And so how can I do that with things that are legitimately operators and other people do too? Like if I have that, it's an easy way to shut it up, me up and, and anybody else who's like me who sees that other view. Yeah, and I guess, I mean, the I think we could work on that experience. I think that could very easily get added into like the 2020 scope. Um, but I guess the question is, is that a blocker or not? And I think that was the, the point that we were just talking about. Yeah, I agree. I also like for, uh, appreciate Red Hat being open. And obviously if there's enough community interest, I expect you to move in that direction. Where it yeah. makes sense. And I might suggest when this goes towards the TOC and it's in the plans that this experience is probably called out because otherwise it'll be discussed on the call. If not by me, I wouldn't be surprised if others do, um, but it will come up. And so if ahead of time you say, our plan is we're able to handle these other situations. This is what we do today. This is what we're planning to adding so that the operator hub isn't just things that use our method for installing them. Other people's ways of doing that can be listed as well and used. That would go a long way. Okay, let's 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 take this one down and, and, and put it in there. I just want to ensure that we can work on some of the, the other uh, feedback of this one as well. So Matt, I'm not trying to shut you down. I'm just trying to get through the document and address some of the other issues in there. Um, do you want to cover the whole thing or do you just want to go through some of the relevant? Yeah, but just, I'm just looking at the questions whether there is And the other one, I was just asking about Ansible, okay, because this is the more related to vendor independence. Yeah, so the Ansible there is just the open source Ansible project, no, yeah. no product. Uh, on the open source question, I had one that I at least did not, but just looking at the repo that wasn't entirely clear to me, is when I look at the operator hub IO GitHub repo, it looks like it's only the website, but not the actual operator hub code. Um, the the website is the, the code. What do you mean? Like, but I, I think that, that the, the other discussion we had is that there's obviously some uh, some containers running in Kubernetes as a backend, or is or did, do we get anything wrong here? Uh, that will be the case uh, in the future. Right now, it's basically a static website uh, that reads the content of the repository once into a Node.js backend and then serves this up uh, with the UI you have today. Um, we do have a database format in place that we are looking to use. So there are no inconsistencies anymore uh, mm -hmm. between what it's in GitHub and what's in the database format and that will run in a container. But right now it's literally once the site starts up, uh, it clones the repo um, that is called community operators. That's where the metadata about all the stuff you see there is located and operator hub IO, the code you've seen is, is the Node.js from then. Okay, that might then resolve my confusion. Okay, then I can remove most of these comments here. Uh, yeah, Brian, you had the same comment. Uh, and that was just for a clarification for posterity. Um, I just want it, want it to be written down like that. Because I, I've actually went through and installed the whole thing and 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 we just wanted to make sure that was clear.
Okay. So you mean like the, the domain and the infrastructure as well as the code? Is that what you, I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, that's, that's actually what I was asking. So you have operatorhub.io. Is that going to the CNCF as well? That, that um, is, um, this is Diane Mueller. That is, it, it, they all are part of the, the operator framework, yes. All right, cool. That's, that's just what I wanted to make, make sure it was clarified. That's all. Yep. If they want it. Yeah, obviously you have your customer examples in there. I mean, we obviously know that people are using operator hub here. Healthy number of committers you have answered. Yeah, Harry, you had a comment on the release cycles here and on OLM and other components. Are you here, Harry? I think yeah. I saw you. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I noticed something uh, in, the, in the doc because um, it, it seems that the OLM has totally different release really cycle with the Opera Hub. I don't know if there's any reason for that. So the um, OLM and SDK, I think were the, the ones that you called out in here are kind of like we talked about, can be used together, but don't have to be used together. So there's no reason for their releases to be synced up as well as the website code. Once again, it's just reading that uh, community operators, you know, bundle of metadata. So it's like the hundred or so operators that we have listed. And that's changing day to day as um, folks are submitting things. And so all of that's kind of all unrelated and doesn't need to be synced up too much. So, so, so the question is, um, if I am a developer who is writing the operator, right? So how can I use OLM separately? Is that possible? Without Opera SDK and Opera Hub or they have to be typed together. All, the, all three, I mean, all the three projects has to be typed, have to be used together. Nope, you can, uh, you know, build the SDK um, and out pops a container that's an operator and you can just use that directly. Um, if you have um, some SDK that you built yourself, like some folks have built some Java SDKs that are not related to the framework, you can use those. Um, and you can stop there if you wanted to. Or if you want some of the lifecycle benefits of the lifecycle manager, the things that, um, Brian was talking about earlier subscriptions and kind of more of a multi-tenant environment and uh, that type of thing. Then you can start using the you know CSV format of the lifecycle manager and do all that. Um, that content is the one that is more tied to um, operator hubs listing, like we talked about. Um, so th they don't have to be all connected. Okay, I see. Okay, yeah. That, that, this this answer answers my first question. The second question is, uh, it seems that the Opera SDK, OAM, and Opera Hub actually have different maturity levels from my perspective because they are actually solving very different problems. I don't know if if it's the goal for um, all of the incubation criteria, and I think we may raise a discussion around that. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. I think we should have a discussion about it. Um, where do you where would you label them today? Uh, sorry. Where would you label each project today? Yeah, so, so from my perspective, I can read that Operator SDK is pretty, um, pretty mature, but for the OAM and Operator Hub, uh, I, I see it's, it's still at early stage. Um, I can see that a lot of operators has been listed in Operator Hub, but for OAM, it, it seems there's the adoption is not very, um, I, I mean, it's not comparable with the Operator SDK. It, am I right, or I just missed something? I think that's one of those ones because it gets installed on folks' clusters. It's harder to gauge than the SDK, which you can go see how many people have cloned it and you know that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where um, it's a little bit harder. But there's definitely uh, thousands of OpenShift clusters that are installed uh, with the Lifecycle Manager. Yeah, that's what I would bring up. I mean, it's installed by default on OpenShift, and I know lots of people are using it. I hear about it all the time. I see. Mm -hmm. But we just don't have any visibility into, you know, just f folks are just running clusters, you know, all over the place. So we don't have any insight into that. Yeah. And I'd also like to point out, while there's a lot of open shifters out there, uh, it's important that the CNCF not play kingmakers here. And we have got a lot of member CNCF certified distributions. And so we shouldn't go off of open shift, but everything should run off of, um, uh, what is it, compliant Kubernetes clusters. So that is actually a really good point. We talked about this at KubeCon um, between uh, our two teams. 
So we're pulling a, T, a tool out of, out of uh, Coddle, our conformance um, and test tool uh, to try to help facilitate that for all of operator framework. So that'll absolutely be a part of, of this whole thing. Yeah, testing, huge, huge component of this. All right, quiet means, um, Alice, we should move on to the next yeah. item on your list. Could, could you uh, tell me, though, before we move on, what the next step is for this due diligence? Um, this is Diane Mueller, the one that will always ask that question. Well, we got back to the TOC with a proposal more or less on accept, no accept, and then the TOC will decide whether they want to have another presentation or not. So does that mean you're, you send it up to the TOC, this document up to the TOC and ask them to take a vote on it? Or do we do another presentation to the TOC? I think it's eventually up to the TOC how they want to have it, whether they want to take over with our uh, proposal or they want to have an additional presentation. Okay. So when, when will that send up happen? Like in the... So usually project presentations are scheduled for like I think the first Monday of the month or the first week at UC meeting of the month. Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, so I think, um, is, where are y'all on technical due diligence on that document? Is yeah. that completed? Yep, okay. we believe so. I, I would like to point, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to point out the next first meeting of the month is the first meeting of the new TOC. And I'm not sure that that will be the same as all the normal ones because we are in an election cycle this month. Still, we really would like to. We've done one presentation to the TOC already, so we'd love to get this get this in and out. Right, Diane. I, I, we, 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 between um, Harry and Alice and myself, we'll we will um, try to move very quickly on this. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the only, I think the bit of an open question for me still is, uh, when I look at the repos, and unfortunately GitHub is not the best place to necessarily figure this out. Uh, the whole graduation criteria is like really having some more or less contributions from at least two organization, which is very vague. Uh, I would like to see a supporting statement that you have like really substantial contributions from, from two organizations. Because I think most people right now are from Red Hat. While this is not a formal requirement, I think it would it would be good just as part of the review. I think the people who are like, if they go to operator SDK, the top active contributors are Red Hat people right now. Right, but I mean, I, I don't want to put that on them because they're not going for graduation right now. I think that's that's a that's a yeah. later step. For graduation, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And really the, the whole push to get it into the CNCF is to get it more open and more co more contributions coming in and more, more people collaborating with us. So, yeah. And I mean, it's good. I mean, even on this phone call today, we had a Kudo project said, hey, we're working. And, yeah. and so that, that's good news. Yeah, I think from the other comments, I think everybody, everything from our side so far has been addressed. I think we are pretty much that document so far and yeah i think the three of us can uh can then talk and move this forward to my TUC liaison to get it to a TUC vote i don't have any questions to brian uh harry anything from your side okay for now Okay, I think then we are actually on top of the hour today. Well, not of the hour, but at the end of the meeting. Uh, I don't know whether it makes sense to start anything else on the agenda today. I don't think so, unless somebody wants to bring something up that can be quick and move the other topics to, to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a agreement. 
All right. Yeah. Then uh, thanks, everyone. And talk to everyone. In Thank you. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks.